Yeah, what's up? Yes, I. I'm sorry. Uh, I assumed the worst though. No, nah, I literally don't. Kid, no, the the the, the imperative uh, 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 performance of my audience does not reflect my actual feelings. The situation. I don't care. Well, no, but fair enough. But uh, well, thank you. But I mean, at the end of the, I should have assumed. Uh, I should have assumed the the worst. Anyway, so uh, no, I'm right. I'm, I I if I'm I ever if I ever block anyone, I lose my reputation as the edgy dirtbag left streamer. So I'm actually I'm Got it. forbidden from ever doing it. Got it. Well, uh, anyways, it's uh, ever since yesterday. I feel like I've gone a little bit paranoid, to be honest. So. Wait, what happened? Well, I'm not baiting. Like, what talk... happened? Mm hmm. I had a discussion with Destiny and. The backlash I got from it was really. Mm, I don't think I've ever gotten that. I mean, I, oh wait, 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 I wait. I have to. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot to say this. You probably assume it's Destiny, not me. You know I'm live, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Whew. I know. I know. I. You know. We all know. You're a little hard in the men words in the private. Okay. I'm just making sure. Just trying to keep my monetization. Okay. Good one. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Please continue. Um. Yeah, ever since, uh, well, Destiny's community sort of has this love-hate relationship with me where they love me one week and then they hate me the next. Yeah, Rem is never wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, as soon as I have a position that, you know, Destiny agrees with, uh, everyone loves me, but then as soon as Destiny disagrees with me on something, you know, everyone hates me. So, I, I've gotten sort of used to it, but yesterday I, I definitely got more, um, backlash and and just awful pms and stuff than i have before which was a bit surprising yeah what was um, the wasn't it oh wait so okay so here's what i know about the drama all i know mm -hmm. is you were having a conversation about was it i think it was the wet Sowetland thing if mm -hmm. i'm yeah and um uh, uh it, it it devolved into destiny saying that the long-term solution here would just be to roll like the indigenous cultures into the state and like see if they could like swim or die in that environment right i mean he said basically if he was you know the leader of canada he would just you know invade them and then force them to have the have the pipeline and uh, i told them well what about their culture and he's like well we can assimilate the culture you don't have to like you know, extinguish it, but I said to him, indigenous culture, um, not everyone, but I would say uh, a majority of them, based on my experience, have their culture inherently tied to the land on which they are they are raised and where their ancestors grew up. Mm -hmm. So by removing them from this land and manipulating their land for the benefit of resource extraction, you are, in a sense, obviously wiping out their identity and culture and that's so exactly just what just to clarify because i because i need to because i don't want to get mm -hmm. roped into defending an untenable position or attacking an untenable position did destiny actually say that he was the leader of canada would want to invade or did he say yeah, he that like that, ideally yes yes or he but he didn't say it in the way like ideally i would have society structured in such a way as for there to be no, no legal no, no, you, i sent you the clips you can watch those two clips okay I'm just, uh, no i did see those clips i'm just making sure that the broader mm -hmm. context of the discussion didn't no, I, I, iron I, asked, out I, a I stayed on longer than i should have because i specifically wanted to make sure that that was the kind of thing that he was advocating for um and i even gave him a very pertinent example of like let's say there's a country of 200 million people and next to it is a country of 2 million people and they have cobalt and the country of 200 million people really need cobalt but the 2 million people say well we don't want to give this up this is ours uh i said what would you do and he said well i'd fucking invade that shit right so you know um so he did use the word invade because i just i don't remember oh, yeah. that i just yeah. remember him saying like ideally structured or something like that mm -mm. Okay. I don't recall ideally structured at all. Okay, he all right. I, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Well, then I'll, I'll take I'll take your word. I guess we can attack those ideas. Um, yeah. And you're uh, you're I guess not in favor of his no, proposition. No. Okay. I mean, just for so it's not like there's no conditions under which, like let's say there's a specific mineral that's needed to like fear the entire population, but you know 500 people are not letting you on the land. If worse comes to worse, there are going to be circumstances under which um, you have to weigh the autonomy of one people against another, right? Racism, but, Rem, looking for excuses to colonize. <laughs> I see how it is. But uh, as it stands in Canada right now, there don't exist any situations at all like that, right? So 
it's just not an applicable uh, type of, of situation. And so, yeah, it really bothered me and it, it really surprised uh, me to hear him say that. And then usually, as soon as Destiny says something really problematic, every single leftist streamer will jump on the issue, right? Mm -hmm. Like, remember, like the N-word thing. Everyone talks about it. But every single streamer, every single leftist streamer last night that streamed, not a single word. And uh, it really, it really shocked me, uh, to say the least. Um, so I, I'm not, uh, I don't know, it's, it was weird to me. And it, it feels, it felt sort of, in a sense, lonely uh, in that this seems to me to be a very clearly obvious position that we should stand out against. But it doesn't seem like many people are willing to stand up and defend it, even though, or, or attack it, rather, uh, attack Destiny's position. Um, yeah. Um, it is essentially he advocates cultural genocide that that is what it boils down to if he agrees with the statements that he made yesterday and he doesn't go back on them that is what he was essentially advocating for do you uh do you mind if i steel man his arguments a little bit so we can have a, a discursive play-by-play sure. -play of uh of, mm -hmm. of, yeah okay <clears throat> So I, I, I actually had a conversation with a um, with an advocate with regards to the Wits of and situation. Pretty goddamn complicated. The fact that we're it dealing not only yeah, the fact that we're dealing not only with a completely different like legal system, but also a very different set of cultural norms that mitigate the interaction between different legal totally systems. Totally different worldview. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like these are super fucking different. Um, so I sympathize in part with what Destiny is saying here because I feel like if you extrapolate the logic of like reservations or settlements to uh, to past a certain point, what you inevitably end up getting is like a bunch of like hyper culturally fixated people trying to justify like ethno states or legally exclusionary zones uh, based on like their shared sense of collective persecution. Um, and I think that's a really bad road to go down. Obviously, the Wet'suwet'en people aren't exactly like fervent ethnostaters who are cynically mm -hmm. exploiting the sentiments of liberals to get away with like having an ethnostate. But what would you say a long-term solution to this is? What do we do? We can't keep the reservations forever. Well, first of all, the, the whole ethnostate, it, it's total bullshit. Talk, go to a reservation. Um, uh, obviously, you can't right now. Also, you don't live in Canada, so you can't. But I'm already on my way, baby. First, <laughs> go to a first nations reservation like these there is a general culture and fundamental belief among um first nations peoples that is incredibly welcoming and if you are not actually well i think it's the micmac uh nation they, it's literally an ingrained rule that you can be disowned from from the nation if you were not ready to offer hospitality to anyone that enters um, and this is an extremely common uh, trade and disposition that First Nations communities have across the entire uh, entire North America and South America, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can literally read reports about when Columbus first arrived uh, at Hispaniola in the Caribbean, uh, these, all of the, the natives came to the beaches with fish and fruit ready to welcome them. Uh, of course, he would then later on commit genocide against these people, but... Yeah, obviously, uh, that's the proest game remove. Right, um, so this whole nationalism that happens in the First Nations communities comes from an attempt to preserve what is being actively destroyed. It is not ever saying that we will never welcome anyone who isn't us into our territory. It is saying that we are in a constant struggle right now to even live and preserve what we have. And that is why we need to be, we can't just tolerate anyone coming into our land whenever they, the government specifically, coming into our land and taking whatever the hell they want. That That's not how this needs to work. That's not what reconciliation really is. So Right, but okay, but oh, oh, all right. So I want to, in, in very strictly pragmatic terms, you agree that long term okay so you and i i assume you agree eventually with the dissolution of the state i'm sure that's something you agree with um are you an anarchist i'm not no i'm not an anarchist but uh, i mean uh not too much of you rem <laughs> um, a decentralization okay all right well we can work within that context um mm -hmm. so if we're in favor of decentralization we have to recognize that in order for the system to work best people within a given area have to subscribe to the same basic legal codes if they can't do that we get like a bunch of really 
um, substantial problems when it comes to understanding which set of rules are meant to be followed, or can we circumnavigate rules by moving to a different province or territory? It just gets really dicey. So with regards to, if we're not going to use Wet'suwet'en politics as an example, then maybe just American reservations, because that's something I'm probably a lot more familiar with. Um, if we're going to acknowledge that fact, wh how then do we make an effort to bring them into the fold? If, because that is something I, ideally I would like to have happen. I don't like the idea of like reservations being a thing forever. Mm -hmm. No, I totally appreciate what you are saying. I just think that this is a discussion that needs to be had after the First Nations people are actually even close to being on the same ground as the average Canadian citizen. So once we get to that certain point, we can talk about a way in which we can equalize. And that, that will mean perhaps adjusting our own legal codes because maybe they are not the correct ones and we can adopt legal codes of other nations that are not identical because throughout all of this there is there tends to be this assumption that the canadian way of life the canadian governmental structure is ultimately the correct form of structure mm -hmm. um and that we have to do we are asking well how can we assimilate everything to our structure there's no talk about well can we critically evaluate our own structure uh, and compare it to our First Nations governmental structure, evaluate what are the good parts of both of this and arrive at a settlement that is able to accommodate to the best of our abilities um, the best parts of both. And th But that's so, 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 so much further down the road, of course, given the struggles that First Nations communities continue to face in Canada specifically. I mean, it was only a few decades ago that these First Nations people were forcibly removed from their homes and placed into residential schools. Um, yeah, I we're not it, that far off at all. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I, I mean, this this is not that, and there's still sterilization going on um, in Saskatchewan against, I believe, Métis people. So there are a lot of these big issues that people need to take into account. In the end, absolutely, I agree with you. There can't be 50 different, no, well, maybe like a thousand in North America alone, differing legal structures. Obviously, that's not, you know, that's not going to be possible. It's not pragmatic. Things will end up for the worst if that's the case. But we should at least recognize that as it stands right now, talking about assimilation of a culture is not, you know, the way we should go about doing this. We need to talk about reconciliation first and foremost. And I think that begins with respecting the self-governance and self-determination and the rights of the lands that these indigenous people have in the first place not just from a moral standpoint but also from but also from a a legal standpoint i like i genuinely believe if this were to go to court which it will eventually uh the wet'suwet'en people will or specifically the hereditary chiefs they will win that legal case because in british columbia supreme courses cases in the past, it has been the hereditary chief legal structure that has been recognized, not the band council structure. So okay, I think legal growth and moral grounds. I think I, I agree say. with I think I agree with literally everything you just said. What exactly about this did Destiny take umbrage with? Um uh, I know I know I, listen, I, I you know I disagree with Destiny on plenty. I feel like that take delivered to me right now is almost inarguable. Um I don't know how I know he was playing League at the time, and it's entirely possible that there are contexts here of which I am not aware, but I feel like, as you just presented to me, that's an almost inarguable point. Well, thank you, but I think that Destiny is... For, and I mean, I can't speak for Destiny, right? You'll have to talk to Destiny um, on your own about the topic, I guess. Um, mm, sure but from what, what I remember, he essentially thought it was absurd that a group of, let's say, um, like, in a hypothetical 500 people can somehow have an effect on what the greater population of the country wants. He thinks that that is, uh, you know, that's not okay. That's really, that that's really weird for a capitalist because I feel like a fundamentally um, the, the idea of um, defending the Wet'suwet'en people's right to their land is analogous to defending the property rights of individual actors who are trying to uh, resist like state seizure of their property yeah, that's a, we have that's a great point we have eminent domain of course there are processes to mitigate this in like individual cases but the idea of like the state saying like eh, i'd rather build an oil well here and then just demolishing like three square blocks of manhattan like this would never happen um it's only because of the economic subjugation of the wet people and their relative cultural marginalization that it's even a question
right? Right. I mean, like if if yeah. So if you were to talk to Destiny about like I I got the impression it was a might is right take. Like I literally gave him a hypothetical of the two hundred million versus one to to isolate it from the indigenous people's issue, and he said, "Well, fuck yeah, then they didn't get the resources." Fuck your he said fuck your culture if it's tied to your land. I mean, I do I mean on a phil in a philosophical sense I do agree with that a little bit, but that's more it's more of a like um like I also I'm also an anti-theist, but I wouldn't like run around telling Muslims like like fuck all you wow you're all living a lie like like ripping off headscarves or whatever just because i think an idea is fundamentally toxic doesn't mean i think that the best way to mitigate that is to like approach it with violence or with state violence or cultural suppression right so going a bit more narrow then on that specific topic about the legitimacy of you know such worldviews or philosophies i used to have that belief like i used to think that you know it, it sounds so you know, it sounds out of date, it sounds, you know, ridiculous, etc. Um, and it really shouldn't be given any uh, serious consideration. But you come at this from, you know, a Western lens, uh, a Western lens of philosophy, when indigenous, indigenous philosophies are very rigorous um, in their justifications and grounding. And I, I would just suggest, I think people should actually do a serious investigation of them in the first place, uh, before maybe dismissing them. I'm not saying you're dismissing them, but as people will readily dismiss them in the first place. Yeah, sure. I mean, well, I, I, I am one of those they, people who this, will- They are I, not theistic. I will tell you, they are not- Well, no, not I know, theistic. I know. They, it's, yeah, I know that it's not a, it's not as much of a mysticism thing as it is just priorities placed in different regards. If you like, if you wanted to like fall all the way back to like axiomatic shit, you could probably do just as good of a job justifying the Witsuwittens people's like perspective on law and culture as you mm -hmm. could mine. Possibly even a better job considering the internal contradictions of capitalism have basically necessary, made necessary hypocrisy if you want to defend the values our society has. Um, right. Yeah, so I mean, I can I can acknowledge that I am one of those people who will say some cultures are better than other cultures, but I don't <laughs> I don't know fucking dick all about the wet Suetan people, so I can't exactly fairly criticize them. Um, uh, I'm just I'm I mean, trying to think here because I don't want to be I don't want to contribute to like an uncharitability train. Destiny's much larger than me, of course. It's not like I would hurt him mm -hmm. or anything, but I am curious. I mean, like look, you can just watch the like you can't watch those clips and not get. I mean, even like, even if you watch the entire thing, it's uh, it's very clear that what he's advocating is a might is right perspective. And I mean, that just follows from his egoism, right? So I'm not sure why people think it's so. Um, you know, apparently Destiny wants to talk. Destiny um, is messaging me. Oh God. Uh, all right, what are we up to? Drag me in. I'm not even streaming. Do you mind me bringing him in? Um, he might target you instead of me. No, you... yeah, he absolutely will. He did some very vicious uh, personal attacks. Can I moderate? Um, can I can I be that? You could try to mod, but ultimately, if it gets to because I have stuff to do tonight, I have a stream tomorrow uh, with the professor on Katie Blood's ghetto crisis. Yeah, little... sure. Hold on, let me. <laughs> let me boom but I will. Ass. I will legitimately leave, and people will say, "Oh, you're being a coward," but I'm not interested in having a a spat. I know. I, he's, yeah, he's got the destiny debate tactics. I know. I'm joking. I understand. Um, okay, hold on. Wait, how the fuck do I do this? Add friends. Um, oh, I see. Okay, here we go. Add friends to DM. On me, destiny. Here we go. I group DM. Hello. Oh, hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey there. Hello. Oh, so before Mr. Uh, Remdeker over here uh, mischaracterized my position as go and murder all the natives and steal their land. Basically, I never all said I'm that. saying what? was that... What are you talking about? Wait, I never said that that's oh, what no. your position was. Wait, would was. it be possible for me to moderate this? I feel so calm right Actually, now. Actually, we can just find the um, we can just find the tweet that he launched like 30 seconds after... When did I say that you should go... Uh, that you were advocating to murder all the people? I never said yeah, that I you know were you going don't. to murder or hurt any indigenous people. Only that you, you were going to wipe out their culture as a result of displacing them from their land. That is is all the I only aspect here. of their culture their land? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, quite literally, the, the primary focus of indigenous worldviews, and specifically, I believe, of the uh, on, so people. Pre pretending that indigenous peoples of, of Canada might be listening to this right now. So yeah. you, as somebody that no, is relatively clueless about plan. most of their culture, which I know you are, you would feel comfortable saying, "Oh yeah," as a white guy who has no idea what most people think. I think that their culture is like ninety nine percent their land, dude. You, that's the that's the argument you want to go with. 
I can Just speak sure. specifically to the cultures that I'm familiar with. Which ones are those, Rem? The Gwich'in people, the Mi'kmaq people, uh, Six Nations. So Gwich'in uh, people have never... So if I were to go and research, like, Gwich'in... First Gwich'in of all, the Six have... Nations, didn't they change from Five Nations to Six Nations? Like, haven't they even changed lands over the history of their existence? Uh, they incorporate... It, it was a confederation, so... But okay, so ha so if I go look at like, the history people, of the Gwich'in people or any of these indigenous peoples, you're telling me they've never yes. switched lands before, ever? N no, not the Gwich'in people, no. Okay. Wait, 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 I don't understand. Hold wait, on. Would it be, wait, 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 wait. Would it be possible, just so we're actually region. discussing the ideas really quickly, Rem, would it be possible to acknowledge that while land does change hands, uh, land is still a fairly substantial part of their culture, and for that reason, the context in which these lands change can often be an important component in the extent to which it destroys or damages their culture? Um, well, yeah, so I, I, I want to make clear that I'm not saying that, you know, uh, like a culture is not something that needs to necessarily strike back to the beginning of time. So as, obviously these people migrated from Northwestern Canada, the United States, all the way to the South. So, and these migratory patterns happened up, you know, after a uh, contact, uh, but then they formed their new culture around the lands that they now inhabited. And like I said, I'm not going to attribute this view to every single, you know, nation or tribe out there. Obviously that's absurd. But from all of the ones that I'm familiar with, the Gwich'in people, the Iroquois, the Mi'kmaq, Ojibwe, right? All of these that I'm familiar with in Canada and some parts in, you know, the Rust Belt area, these are all people who have their culture inherently tied to the land. And if you remove them from your, their land, you are removing an essential part of their culture. That is a view I will absolutely stand by. Based on what I have learned about the subject, if you have you know, a source that says that land isn't an integral part of these people's culture, I will absolutely read it and I'm happy to be proven wrong. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading real quick. I, unfortunately, when I get into these types of arguments, I've learned that I can never take anything for granted because most of the time people are very comfortable lying. Um, do you want me, do you want me to bring them. up? I can bring up for you. I, I have a whole book me too, on the brother. religion culture. I, I, I'm sure you have the book. I know you people. haven't read it, though, so I don't care. I know you, you haven't you read it. You don't think I've read it? No, I know you haven't. Ram, when we got into a conversation two days ago, I have no idea about any of the indigenous peoples whatsoever, and you very comfortably made the claim Why are you that making the majority... Oh, wait, can I... Chill. It's totally okay? unnecessary. I'm not making a character attack. I'm talking about the knowledge that you failed to have. A couple days ago when we spoke, you very confidently yesterday. asserted that the... Okay, yesterday. You very confidently asserted that the majority of indigenous people lived very far north in Canada where no one else did. And I and you get, you linked me a map that proved the own map you linked me was, was made that incorrect. You spoke in vague generalities about literally everything. It's pretty clear that you have like a surface level, like barely Wikipedia knowledge of this. You have not read any books on this. It's painfully obvious. Are you... Do you want to tell me right now that whatever book you were about to cite, you actually read it cover to cover on this yeah, topic sure i can give you five i can give you ten wait you gave you me go grab them? Wait, wait, wait. literally right here we're going to measure me, our dicks you you you're, you can tell me that you've read 10 books cover to cover on this yes but you couldn't speak in any more than a lot of people like this or a lot of people like that or well, something like what is like what is the underlying names, contention nations, here but i know that you don't know my problem is that Rem didn't really have a good grasp of what he was talking about he's pretend he's pretending like he's an authority on the subject it's insane to me if it was if it could be proven to you if it could be proven to you that rem was more knowledgeable than you seem to perceive he is would you take issue with the takes that he's given well, I don't like to, it's really cringy for me to ask him to like drill down on these things, but like, can you tell, talk to me a little bit about the history of the Iroquois people, I guess, if... Wait, the Iroquois people, well, the Iroquois are not like a specific type of people. They're more of a generalized uh, region of, of Canada that confederated. Uh, I could, honestly, on the Iroquois, not my best area. My best area would be the Northwestern Gwich'in peoples uh, and probably Micmac and some southwestern weren't like, the iroquois wasn't that league like one of the most like prominent indigenous people's leagues that like existed that people talk about and you say you've read 10 books cover to cover on this type of stuff and you don't know anything about them like i'm sorry rem but you're like i, I, I know, know you you're lying I... to me i know you're lying to me like it's it, it, i'm cringing right now for you i don't know why you can't just admit that like okay sure i've read a lot of articles on this i have I've read I, some well, I've, I've learned about the iroquois because i well we learned that literally in grade 10 and we learn about the formation of the iroquois league and, and are you canadian and the wars and the, the, the pardon are you canadian yeah i'm canadian Fuck. that sucks sorry 
Why does that suck? Nothing. Um, wait, what? wait, I'm sorry. What was the first part of that you said? Wait, what did you, what did you being Canadian have to do with that? <laughs> well, because we learn it in our curriculums. Okay. Wait. So then, why don't you know anything about them? I do know about the Iroquois, but for modern day Iroquois nations and their current cultures is not something I'm very well read up on. The well, but you of very Iroquois confidently to colonialist powers. I do know about, but that's not going to be relevant for our conversation. It's very relevant because just a few minutes ago, you very confidently asserted that none of these people have ever moved from their lands before because their land is an integral part of their identity. I, when did I say that they haven't moved away from the... I literally just told you that, of course, they migrated from the northwestern areas of Canada. I literally okay, said that. Okay, then it sounds like these people are able to move. Oh, cool, then we have no... Yeah, well, we have no wait, 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 wait. Cool. Even, even if we acknowledge that they are able to move, I don't think that th necessarily follows that it does no harm to them to expect them to move at the state's yeah, request. Yeah, of course. So my original argument to anybody that was listening and wasn't just trying to look for slam dunks was that if there exists some territory within the borders of your country that has resources that can dramatically enrich the lives of your people, I probably wouldn't let a group of squatters that are sitting on it overrule the rest of the country and even the rest of the other indigenous tribes and say, we don't want anything touching this land. That seems insane to me. Well, how I think how would that you there feel if they to... were just private citizens, what? though? If it had nothing to do with native rights, if there was just like a neighborhood and it was owned by some company or by a group of individual proprietors would I mean, you have the, the state States, bowl we, over them in the same way yeah you have to domain those people it sucks but like sometimes for the benefit of society like you can't allow like a couple people to just ruin it for everybody else because they were at some spot before somebody else was it's a really I, silly way in my I, opinion of going about doling out land well i do acknowledge that i think your use of the word squatters um does kind of yeah. belie an impression of these people that might not be uh, <laughs> i i was i didn't want to comment on it but well, Rem, I, you well, love commenting on it because you feel like you're getting slammed next all the time. So the reality no, is, is that it, Rem is saying that they should have it water. because they were there first. That's a squatter. You got there first, so you keep it. But that's our regardless argument. Regardless of the for... benefits of the other people around them, regardless of the harm caused to the other people around them, and regardless of what the majority will of the other indigenous tribes there are, you think that because they got there first, they have not only have rights to land, but they have the right to the land, irregardless of what the rest of Canada or indigenous peoples want, and that's no one has right to even the touch argument for the existence of states, though. I mean, if you disagree with that principle, you have to necessarily disagree with any kind of stated boundary. Because Not that's... at all. States exist within a federal system that have to make compromises with each other all the time. And the American system, I imagine, probably in the provincial system of, of Canadian Parliament as well. I'm but sure if we do the Mexican to... people an infinite amount of good for them to annex some portion of American land, there is no force on earth that could move us in that regard. We were here first. If, wait, can you say that again? Yeah, so like if, if the people of Mexico, the government, the people, whatever, um, mm -hmm. thought that they could substantially benefit the people of their land by annexing a portion of the United States of America, the argument we would use fundamentally is, no, fuck off, this is our land. And while I don't disagree that, I mean, hey, listen, I'm an anarchist, fuck property rights, but if that's the argument you want to make, we also have to recognize this this could be used this could be applied in a lot of other contexts that i don't know if you would necessarily agree well, with. well but it can't because mexico can't annex land from the united states right legally is the con wait are we talking legally or morally here i'm like well i like like practically they wouldn't be able to right the united states maintains its own borders and the united states has the capability of maintaining and defending its own borders so right? wait but that's the might makes right argument so then you're saying yeah, if the west so waiting people right. wait wait, 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 wait can i clarify if i may so yeah, your well, argument no, there was that we have the strength to sovereignly like defend right. our borders yeah but the yeah. west waiting don't of course but then if we're saying the only reason we get to take their land but mexico couldn't take ours is because we're strong and they're not we're implicitly saying that the worth of taking land is a product of the extent to which they're capable of defending it which is so, yeah so to some extent I, I think that there, like there's a nugget of truth in there so the idea would be is that if they exist literally at, at the at the only as a result of another country being there to provide as much for them as they can right which they do so for instance any of these indigenous peoples that exist in these countries are literally only there because other countries are surrounding them keeping them safe probably providing them with a lot of tax subsidies and whatnot to keep them going not to say that that's enough because we've screwed over a lot of these people in a ton of different ways i think it's okay if the entire rest of the country that is involved in supporting these like small indigenous tribes is like hey listen you kind of want to run a pipeline through your land like i know it kind of sucks you can keep everything else we're not going to come and kill you we're not going to steal anything or whatever but like we need to partition off some part for this like I'm sure there's a way to figure that out rather than for these people to have the supreme god rights over land that they can't even like hold themselves that they rely on subsidies from the government around them to take care of Th that's what I think I think there's you, a way to work do you that think out. the fact that they rely on subsidies is component to this like if they didn't do you would you get, grant them more like moral autonomy yeah 
I think that if they were a complete and total separate nation, like totally on their own, I think it would be a, a little different, sure. Then the argument I, that I, I would, wait, wait, the, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah. Destiny. I just wanted to make sure. Then the argument okay. I would make is the only reason they're dependent on the nation is because they've already been the victims of colonization, right? It's not like before but, the Canadian folk came over there, the French, whatever. Uh, it's not like they were like looking out for handouts from Europe. Like they were autonomous until we put them in a position politically, socially, and economically where they would need to depend on uh, handouts that were given to them by their colonizers. That's so that's kind of true. And unfortunately, there's no good answer for this. And this is going to trigger the fuck out of a lot of people. But like, you, you can't really run that argument back more than like, I, I don't know, a few decades, maybe 100 or 200 and this or 20 years. Was a few decades ago that, they, that these people were placed in residential schools and were yeah. actively oppressed. And there's still sterilization going on in First Nations communities. That's cool. I'm not okay with oppressive schools. So I don't know why you brought it up, but good good point, Ram. No, because um, but the problem is that like, if you run this back infinitely, watch, that the Canadian government take, right. made what over the past few decades, that is readily... Cool, that's, that's a, cool. That's a cool story. Okay. So the problem is that if you run this back infinitely, these people probably stole the land from somebody else. And then I don't know why you're acting like such an asshole. From somebody else. Well, because well, you're bringing up, because, uh, Rem, because you're bringing up points that I obviously don't disagree that with. that Bosch and I were having. Yeah, okay, because you, you're bringing you up this dumb point. Your tweet was saying that the Canadian, Destiny saying that the Canadian government should invade all native communities, remove them from the land, and thereby assume them a Canadian culture. You would invade these, these, these no. nations? No. What I said was that I would try to roll these quote-unquote sovereign Indian nations that aren't even truly sovereign into my country somehow. I'd either make them another province, make them another right. state, bring yeah. them another thing. And, 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 dis, and, and because you were taking over these portions of their lands, you were displacing them from their native lands, and in a sense, eradicating their culture because it's inherently... You're not eradicating just because you roll somebody into their country doesn't mean you eradicate their culture. It does when you displace them for the means You don't of have to displace attraction. them. What do you mean? If you are shoving a pipeline through their native land, their heritage, that is displacing them from their land. I don't understand. What, what, what does doing? all of the land that the pipeline, is it like miles and miles across become all uninhabitable? It's all no. destroyed? Like, what do you mean? Well, actually, yeah, there's a huge issue that these pipelines do have an awful I, ecological effect. Uh, and I can send you an article that has shown the actual effects on that on First Nations community. So actually, yes, to my, an extent. My concern but worse, is, is it sorry. drives them away from those areas of the land that have been seen as their ancestral home and of which they have tied their you identity. You ancestral, but earlier you acknowledged that these people have moved around before so it's not like it's impossible that they could resettle 10 miles away like, my, my concern well, wait, 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 please please you, you right you did you did just say they don't need to resettle but now you're saying like they could just resettle a bit over do you mean like within their own territories well, you sure. Well, he's making it sound like you'd be taking these people and shipping them off to Liberia, like what Lincoln wanted to do. Okay, but the, the, issue, the issue I have here, and I and I hope you understand that I'm probably yeah. not as far over and woke on this as Rem is, because I literally just got in trouble for the black nationalism thing. Uh, I don't really sure. care about black culture. Black nationalist, by the way. I don't care. Well, oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> okay, I don't necessarily care about in culture intrinsically, but in the context I think we can all of... sort of agree on that, by the way, just... That's a little. Uh, hey, brand. listen, hold up. I've got a lot of people. I've got the, the fucking Pharaoh mask on my Terraria well, character and everything. I'm trying to get in good with them. Um, literally a fascist on Twitter. My, so. my, 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 my main concern Sorry. here is that I feel like this is taking context, uh, or this is taking place in the context of a broader pattern where we were like, okay, we're done invading you. Have your land. But wait, actually, hold on. One more thing. But wait, actually, one more thing. And then we do this, like, we roll it back forever and forever. The issue is that because the Wet'suwet'en people, or people of any other indigenous predilection in our countries, don't really have the social or military autonomy to defend themselves and to defend their provinces, their autonomy only exists until it's inconvenient to us. So even if it might bring about, like, a great good to lay pipe through their lands, I feel like in the context of us continuing to... Um, subvert the, the, the autonomy we promised them a century and a half ago, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it leads to a greater utilitarian harm. I feel like we almost have to respect their rights if for no other reason than because at this point, to go back on the expectations that have been set for them is tantamount to continuing a genocide that has been going yeah, on so for a long I time. So I wouldn't say continuing a genocide, but I 100% agree. That's why I said, I don't think you can have your cake and eat it too. To grant sovereignty to any indigenous people is a joke. One, it's not real sovereignty because it's going to be disrespected as soon as it's insanely inconvenient to another party and then um and then two you're going to continue to run into problems over and over and over again as one as the country the, the dominating country tries to exert its influence over the people that's why it feels to me like the most effective way to do things is to say hey you know what we're going to make you guys a province or a state or a municipality or whatever they have in canada they would do it and then now you guys are going to be part of the voting base the tax base you're going to blah 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 and that seems to be the most effective way to do things because the reality is, is that, means, that means removing their governmental structure 
Cool. Okay. So the reality is, is that inherently tied to their culture as well. well. Damn. Sounds like their culture needs to come into the 21st century. Then, sorry. Um, the reality oh is, is that, like, the let's say that OPEC, or let's say that a whole bunch of like oil producing countries. Can I? Can I challenge yeah, I know, you a little it's bit? It's all racism to you. I know, Rem. Can I challenge but, but, you a little okay. bit on that, Destin? Oh, wait, wait, real quick. Yeah, sure. Wait, wait. Okay. Just, I'm just saying, like, my yeah, problem is that, like, yeah, and I'm sure everyone here would agree. Even Rem would. Yeah, yeah, I know, dude. It's white people, right? So um, the problem is that like if we run into some national or international like oil shortage or some crazy stuff starts happening and like the entire economy of Canada is suffering, there is no possible way that the rest of the Canadian citizens are going to be content to just sit on all the natural resources sitting in certain areas or or not have like certain pipelines flowing through just because some people there want it not there, right? These are people that don't have the best interest. Well, most why, why does it matter what the, majority, the majority of Canadians at one point were totally fine to literally commit genocide against the indigenous people. We're talking about what the Canadian government should actively be doing right now, what, not about what the majority. Sure. And I think the what the Canadian wants. government should be actively doing is looking out for the majority of its citizens. That's what I think the Canadian at government. All should be doing. Times? Uh, not at all times. I mean, no, I mean, generally there are exceptions to this. So if the majority like, of Canadians want to actually commit genocide against those people. You, oh my God! Hold on. Wait, I, I, I'd that, like Rev. it if we could. No, Ren is right. Actually, I would be opposed if the majority okay. of people wanted to commit genocide. Would do you want to ask me any others, Rem? Would I be okay if the majority of the people wanted to rape all black people or wanted to murder all children? You said ask that me the another Canadian one government of those, ought to do what the majority of the people. No, no, Rem. I actually did. You, you just made me reconsider my whole point. That was ingenious. Okay, when you're done oh being an ass, then yeah. I'm sorry. Can I wait? Can I clarify? Do you do you want them to rape all of the Wet'suwet'en people, Destiny? I never even considered that one before, Vosh. If I'm if I'm being totally honest with you, okay, I never considered that the majority could exert a negative all. influence over a minority of people. I guess I guess since Rem brought that up, I guess the reality I, is that a minority of people should actually have infinite power over the majority of people. I think well, that's the reasonable wait, the, alternative. Well, the, I think. Yeah, the, I think that's a better alternative. Well, the issue is, is really to smart. an extent to an extent we already kind of believe in that, right? Like here, no. like well, we well we do in some classes because we don't believe in tyranny of the majority. For example, the idea of protected classes, right? Fundamentally, what we're doing like even if there's a reciprocal benefit here is we're saying everyone hundreds of millions of people can't engage in certain types of discriminatory behavior because it is conceivably capable of hurting a small minority of people uh, i don't sure, think there's necessarily do wrong with that in principle a... no, yeah but we don't do that at the detriment of like the larger group of people generally um, at least i can't think of like fuck i'm pretty sure if i thought for it i could think of times where legally and socially we've adopted policies that respected the autonomy of individuals to the uh, to the detriment of the majority but i, would I mean have i guess to... you can argue that like if you're like a landlord and you really hate trans people or corporations as people boss. maybe that like you have uh, you don't even know what that means rem um but like i imagine that if you were like a, a building what? owner and you really i don't think what do you think it means when you recognize a corporation as a person rem it was a fucking meme like the same way that you were fucking memeing about uh, about committing genocide we, against indigenous people. We, wait, 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 Why did that you can make a jokes? What did the meme mean? <sighs> can you explain what the meme meant? I just didn't know what you meant by recognizing corporate people. Do you think it's a silly concept? Why is it silly, Rem? The joke is that we can recognize a certain type of status to a few mm -hmm. people that are not attributed to this, to all people in a given population. And that can be a detriment to the entire population. Oh, I know one. Wait, I know one, Destiny, that I know for a yeah. fact you agree with. Making oh, yeah, it so it. making it so that school districts aren't funded by property taxes. What that's going to do fundamentally is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the wealthier people in a, in a given neighborhood aren't going to have guarantees that their schools will be disproportionately funded. But uh, so that that's definitely material harm being done to them but the poor people in that neighborhood like get a better shot um i think you can make a reasonable argument there are plenty of decent like examples in our society where we're willing to concede like the well-being of the majority if we can take a principled stance against harming a minority group that's kind of true okay i'm about to take a massive lefty position woke super woke thing on you hey i've been so waiting when for I, it you know how when some people say like uh racist doesn't mean uh just being uh racist it means powerful surges when i think of majority and minority groups i usually think of status in society so for instance females are a minority in society even though they're a majority population because they have a minority of power mm -hmm. so like you can discriminate against wealthy people in the forms of like taxation or mixing up school districts but i mean like there's a very small amount of people that are hurt there they're not minority power holders but it like benefits the rest of society greatly so in that case, I would be like, yeah, tax them a little bit more, you know, whatever, and then that's okay. The same way with the whatever the indigenous people sitting on the land, I'd be like, okay, build a pipeline through the land. There's a little bit of harm done, but it benefits everybody else greatly. I, I, I think accept like that. Thing. What what about um what about reparations though? Um, I know this is like typically something that right wing people will say, but realistically, mm -hmm. if we try to make a societal effort to reinvest in like black businesses and black neighborhoods and recompense there, mm -hmm. that's going to be a societal displacement of of wealth from everyone, including other minority groups, um, towards like one group of people. 
There, my so without knowing like the um first of all calling it reparations is is weird. I agree, it's a bad um, term. Yeah, but you. Just yeah, the the, the only thing that hurts me with reparations is like, man, if you were like an American Indian and black people started regretting reparations, I would be fucking so mad. Like, <laughs> maybe serious? the like, priority no list could be. Yeah, I guess like I'm just kind of thinking. I, but I mean, like you could. I don't really care if you call it reparations. Or not clearly, African American communities in the United States need help. It just it feels like. I, I, I don't know. I would have to look at like tax structures more, but it feels like there's got to be enough money at the top to help these people that like people in the middle and bottom don't have to throw so much out to like bolster poor communities. Like there has to be a better way that we can structure our tax system, whether it's through more capital gains increases or higher taxes at the end, at the upper end of the bracket. Like there has to be some way to distribute money to these people that like makes it work, that doesn't just take money from a bunch of middle class or poor people. Okay, well, I, well, I would agree with that, but I thought mm -hmm. that you were, um, I thought that you were generally okay with means testing and didn't like the universality of programs because you didn't think it lent any benefits well yeah i think means testing is really good but what does that have to do with what we're talking about i thought you were saying like in in so far as you're you attempting to apply like the wealth redistribution with regards to what reparations you would try to do so in such a way as to avoid targeting um uh certain groups oh i think i miss oh, i wait, misheard so you, you i, I misheard my apologies like, i misheard you i thought you said the opposite of what you said okay i acknowledge your point though oh, yeah. if i sure. if i can bring that can around I, can then I oh yeah sure Absolutely. I, I want to make sure that we're all on the same. So, Destiny, specifically, I gave you that example yesterday of because look, I, I agree with you that there are certain circumstances in which, you know, a minority group of, you, let's say, like less than a thousand people, like let us say in a hypothetical world, they have a very valuable resource on their land that is required to like, let's say, even save the rest of the population that surrounds them. Obviously, that is a scenario where the the autonomy of an entire populace will take precedence over the autonomy of, let's say, 500 people. I'm not ruling out as a possibility that that type of invasion, which it quite literally is, would not be warranted. But we were specifically talking about the Canadian cases that exist right now where we are trying to put a pipeline through. And I would say that the benefits that this gives to the average Canadian does not at all come close to overpowering the, the blatant violation of international law for one, Canadian law for another, and also just the ethical quandaries that would surround invading a native person's people's homes and eradicating their culture as a result. I mean, I just don't believe you because I'm pretty sure the majority of the what's you went to I can't pronounce their names. I'm pretty sure the majority of them have voted on it. And the majority of them are okay with Give it. Me so. Give me a source on that. Um, there, there's no source for that. L like, did literally... every single democratically a leader, elected leader be okay with it? And the only ones that were opposed to it were the hereditary ones, and they kicked off the three other hereditary ones that were also okay with it? Am Again, this up? is the complicated thing around their specific governmental structure, because the way that the band council is elected is not the same way that, for example, we would elect our local representatives. The band council is not only elected by all people of the general nation. It is elected only by people who are on the Indian register, and not all indigenous peoples are on the Indian register. How and many also, aren't on the? How many aren't on the register? I can't. Again, we don't and it have. Like ready. You're not well informed enough on the opinion to have a. No, that's is that there are no. Well, they are not numbers for those. One, Wait, we're, 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 we're presupposing. We, we're presupposing the legitimacy yeah, of a this. democratic effort to to justify their like involvement here. Sure, Destiny, if they disagree with it. Would that make a difference to you? Don't like, exist. Rem keeps saying like, oh, a lot of people don't like this. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, the democratically elected leaders are all in favor of it. It's like, I'm, oh, not, I'm not familiar, I'm not familiar with the extent the to which... Canadian government. I'm not familiar with the extent to which the people agree with it, but since fundamentally our disagreement is not on whether or not they agree with it, but whether or not they should have a right to oppose it if they do disagree with it, I'd rather we focus specifically on that. Sure. I think... Well, I, I, like, this is one of the reasons why I would, if they were part of like, I don't know how Canada's parliament system works, but I'm... It's it's probably some of the U.S.'s. If they were like part of that parliamentary system where like different states had different amounts of representations, maybe they could get something in exchange for it, right? If they don't like the the way that their schooling system is treated or if they want more like federal funds or whatever, that could be part of the that's negotiation. The like, hey, that's, like you, that's the what? issue is that they, they would see this as absolute assimilation. You remove their traditional hierarchical governmental structures that are tied in to their culture, their governmental systems, the, the, the role of an economic chief, the, the role I just of don't care. overall chief. These are things that are baked into their culture and the way that I, they are interact with the land. How, so by, how large is the wait? Why don't you wait? People? Why don't you care? Well, because of the like, how large is the tribe of people? Um, the Wet'suwet'en I think is like two thousand or so. Yeah, I, I just don't care. 
Do you, like, wait, but that, wait, that, that, that's a mic mix, right? Oh, wait, if we're but talking that about the, is a mic no, 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 mix. It's, it's a matter of prioritizing. I'll get the numbers, well, it's I'm a matter of wrong. prioritizing the will of 2,000 people to the detriment of the 40 million citizens that live in Canada. I'm, I like, I'm sorry. I mean, like, if you can't move 10 miles away and it's that big of a deal. My concern yeah, here, right, and I know I can't, I know for a fact that I can't move you over on this. It's just, it's frustrating to me that you would adopt that position when I know you would rebuke my arguments that laws are passed to the benefit of a few thousand corporations that end up hurting the rest of the country um wait why do you think i would rebuke that um <laughs> sure okay favorite most corporate law in the united states calm down i know you think well, i'm or not you but a lot of people say i'm a right winger but i'm incredibly far left when it comes to my economic position i but would have to go back and watch your videos to see any specific things that i think we have a disagreement sure. on didn't we didn't we both basically agree that citizens united was a nearly impossible like constitutional okay, wait, wait, wait. or moral I, task to you guys can have this discussion but i i just i want to hammer on the fact that if we're talking about this specific case the Wet'suwet'en case, okay? Your contention here is that by instilling this pipeline, this that positive that it brings to the general populace is going to outweigh, you know, this essential cultural genocide against the Wet'suwet'en people. Okay? I guess it will probably be fine after the pipeline. I, uh, think I think they'll be okay. I think they'll make it. Uh, okay, uh, I would disagree. Wait, and out of so, curiosity, if we could if we could reverse the roles, okay, swap the genders, all right? Let's say we're talking about an alternative position where we live in a an autocratic hierarchy, like our state is fundamentally undemocratic, and there's a small community of people um, who uh, who live in a, uh, a say democratic uh, special exempted section of that country, so like a reservation, and they democratically came to conclusions that were. Um, that were not conducive to the broader interests of the autocratic nation, which you, with your current moral beliefs, say it's probably reasonable for those autocrats to take that land and do what they will with it because you don't really care as a matter of priority about the democratic beliefs of the people who are being downtrodden. I mean, as much as I hate to say it, Generally, I tend to side almost de facto with like people that are a little bit more democratic. That might be my inner liberal speaking. There's nothing but, wrong like, with democracy, Frank. I, I don't know about that. But I take I think it back. That, There's nothing that, worse about it than other things. Sure. I think that inherently, I think that the autocratic people have a very strong argument to make. And I could definitely understand, as much as I might hate certain autocratic or totalitarian or authoritarian governments, I can understand when they're like, hold on, rest of the world. Why are you getting so fucking mad? These are supposed to be our special administrative region. Why the fuck are you trying to tell us what we can? I can definitely see the conflict there and the irritation that certain autocratic states might have with the rest of the world saying, well, hold on, you know, like here. But like these situations are obviously very complex too because of treaties and other nations as well. But yeah, I mean, like, I, in, in general, in principle, I could understand the larger autocratic state being like, well, hold on, we're going to roll over this democratic region, fuck them. I do, could, you think I there's, the, yeah. do you think it's conceivable that the act of building the pipeline through the Wet'suwet'en territory would end up, in a consequentialist sense, doing more harm long term because it would further yes. normalize the, the, the uh, I, I guess, the obliteration of minority rights and autonomy in favor of, like, a broader national pursuit? I feel but like, I, and I'm, I'm not, like, wait, wait, I'm not saying this is exactly equivalent, I'm only saying yeah, I, I feel like it's similar to a lot of other arguments a person could make that would start bordering on cultural genocide. And can I just rephrase that? Because I just want to, because this is a specific question I have for you, Destiny, is what, are, how, how is it that the benefits of this pipeline specifically would somehow outweigh the cultural genocide of the Wet'suwet'en people? That's the question because I want to know. the cultural genocide of 2,000 people is like a, it's a, first of all, it's a very hard, first of all, I don't even believe it would be an entire cultural genocide. And then secondly, it's hard to weigh like their discomfort having to move to some areas versus the actual material harm. I hate that fucking phrase, but against the actual material harm that would be caused to a lot of Canadians that don't have the ability to take advantage of those. Who, who is really going to be harmed by not having this pipeline? Do you know? Any Canadian that would have had a job that would have been involved with any of these industries. So everybody from mm -hmm. lawyers that litigate things mm -hmm. all the way down to construction workers that build the pipeline, all the way down to anybody that works in a, in a fossil fuel related job. Do you think like job energy? creation is the only important thing when it comes to this type of thing though? Do you not think, like Vosh was saying, that the long-term environment effects that the pipeline will have and the fact that we're not putting well, i haven't touched on the creating... environmental yet but i was curious in environmental you're a big loser there because if you want to talk about environmental effects you have to invest in green energy right now not building the pipeline probably has worse environmental effects because that same oil either has to be driven or it has to be transported overseas which is going to be an even greater contributor to greenhouse gases who may guess but um regardless like in terms of like long-term harm like that i'm a huge valid. globalist cuck 
I think as many people should be rolled into like as large a fucking culture as possible. I think that people can have their own little areas and their own like they can have their own little traditions and all that is great. But the idea of like sectioning off some parts of the world and being like, this is for, you know, this indigenous people only. This is only for, you know, white nationalist, Eurocentric people. This is only for like, nah, I'm not as No, but fan this is what I was talking to Botch about at the start of the stream here, because I agree with you that at the end of the day, there needs to come a point, you know, if we want to have this globalist union of all peoples in the world, obviously we can't have these segments of lands that are, you know, completely off limits to everyone else. And I was even telling Bosch this, reservations are not really off limits to anyone who is not a member of that reservation. That is not how these indigenous cultures behave. They are incredibly welcoming to all people. What they don't like is the Canadian government who imposed upon them a very strict form of government that went again their wishes after they continually oppressed them for centuries uh, to the point where it's only been in the past couple of decades that we are now hearing these stories of the oppression that took place you know over the last 50 years these people don't want that same government coming in and shoving a pipeline through their land wait this is, is not about them is there another place the pipeline could be built i understand i understand this is an obscenely childish question but if there was an additional expense the canadian government could incur to put that pipeline elsewhere does anyone know if there's a feasible? So my understanding, because I read a bit about the Keystone Pipeline, which I know isn't the same here, but generally no, there's the gas link. Yeah. Yes. So generally, there's a lot of different committees that come together to evaluate like the safest and cheapest and most feasible way of like laying a pipeline or whatever. Um, my guess is going to be that this is the one that they ruled would have the least ecological damage and would have like the um, the, the easiest to build and the less shit to tear up or whatever. That would be my guess on this. You know how they're just doing it because they really want to fuck over these indigenous people. I don't. Well, I didn't think that. I yeah. don't think they care that much, though. They haven't historically. Well, they, so they, if, if we if we want to be real, they do care if for no other reason. From an optics, for, yeah, yeah, because it would get them yeah. shit if they didn't. I mean, like fundamentally, yeah. I don't think they. Well, care no, it's illegal. The they, they, they'd be most concerned about the legal repercussions of it well, because ultimately, if this goes to Canadian court, which it almost certainly will, this is what I was telling. Bob. Sorry, let me clarify. Their their point of care doesn't come from the same cucky, bleeding heart, liberal shithole that yes, my chest course. holds. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, so with that, so with that being court, so with that being said, is it conceivable? Destiny, do you think that the um, that the uh, it, much in the same way that it is often beneficial to lie to other people, but it ultimately hurts you because if it comes out you're a liar, no one will ever trust you again. Do you think yeah. that establishing a reputation on the part of the Canadian government for engaging in this sort of behavior might ultimately lead to a subversion of values which are thetical to you know maintaining a democratic society? Yeah, I know for a fact. We're talking for... about like establishing a rule that's going to lead to future harm, right? I, this mm -hmm. is why I said that like I don't think you can have the I don't think these reservations. I don't think they make sense. Like there are so many problems related to how these are ran, at least in the United States, maybe not in Canada, but definitely in the United States. It feels like it would just make more sense to roll them into your federal system. I know you keep saying people. that, but these people resist that. They see that literally as cultural genocide destiny. That is what they view that. You will, would be eradicating their culture as a result. Cool. Well, uh, sounds I, like somebody needs Paul Revere or somebody needs to go ride around or get some Federalist papers written up by John whatever and, and, and try to convince him to try no, to, well, to be yeah, to, to be cares? wait to be fair cares, about but I'm explaining to you how they are going to actually view that act. He said, well, why can't they do that? because look well, at the my, wait, wait, my, my issue is that that was also a might makes people. right argument. If you believe like you the argument exactly you would make exactly. well the, the the argument you would have to make would be that I believe the utilitarian benefit that we get out of the placement of this pipeline, even if it leads to what they would consider to be cultural genocide, is still ultimately better for society. But when you defer back to this, like, well, better hope they join with Paul Revere thing, what it makes it sound like is, well, it is a shame they don't have the strength to enforce their will. I, I think no, that's a fair so reading. That. I just think it's kind of silly to assume that, like, it's literally impossible for these people. They're, like, such savages that it's impossible that they could ever exist under, like, a larger federal system, that their culture will necessarily disappear immediately. Why don't just listen to what they fucking say, Destiny? You can literally well, you don't listen want to, to because they already voted on president. it and they disagreed with you. The council well, already voted. Oh, my God. No, to be fair, we know again, we know this does happen the though. History. This you is are ignoring the way that the government has structured the First Nation organization. You literally admitted yourself that you don't know how many people aren't able to not vote. The so, issue, I mean, like, I, I'm sure we can all agree that the West Sowetan people wouldn't literally fucking die if they had to move well, or join up with the broader. I don't but think, I don't think Rem actually thinks that. What I, what I, what, what I do. That it sets. Wait, that wait. would be the worst impact. What I, what I do think is that we've kind of seen this pattern play out before in Sub-Saharan Africa and in the Middle East. When people, I guess we would call them indigenous by today's standards, have their borders uh, or their geographic cultural heritage carved up 
by the bureaucratic expectations of Western or any more powerful governments, it generally leads to outcomes that are that are very devastating in the long term. And while I don't think that the Wet'suwet'en people are some sort of horrifically genocidal, or sorry, not genocidal, like uh, uh, animalistic people who could possibly survive without whatever rivers and forests they were born next to. Destiny, as a person who has a fairly low expectation of the average person, I'm sure you can understand that such a cultural uprooting would lead to long-term suffering and systemic inequality going probably many generations into the future. That kind of stuff just that, like, can't assuming, really be done well, I don't think. Assuming that the people are like compensated adequately, so financially, obviously like, there's going to be a house destroyed you have to move that you should be provided the funds or whatever like you would with an imminent an, an imminent domain thing at least in the united states i imagine they have similar things in canada yeah you would have to compensate the people for it. i i refuse to believe that there exists some group of people on the planet that are so incapable of like moving to, to a different area like given financial means and everything to do so that their whole culture will just die out I, that just sounds ridiculous absurd to me i'm well, sorry maybe not well, die out but be wounded severely no i'm sure I, you can I refuse to believe that no i don't believe wait that. can we uh, wait, wait, wait can we talk about that because i feel sure. like that's a strange position for you to take when we say die out i mean i'm sure you can imagine and i apologize if i'm being um reductivist here, I don't know, fuck all about the, what the West Sowetan people believe. Um, but like, I'm sure we can imagine that, especially for some indigenous cultures, the tie to the land in which you have been raised for centuries, I imagine, um, is great enough that um, the removal from that land is going to be more emotionally damaging to those groups than any amount of material compensation could ever possibly restitute them for. And while well, I agree as a big brain another river or another piece But it's of not land but, but, wait, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. But you recognize another tree it's is not the, the same. Wait, 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 but yeah, I don't want to get all bleeding hard about this, but I like yeah, but you recognize bleeding hard is thinking basic facts just, about the way that indigenous people do okay, their culture and I, land and it's being dismissed like it's not relevant. Okay, well, that's the entire thing of the discussion. I'm not I know they can find another river, another tree, but considering some of these cultural um uh, 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 forms develop over the course of centuries. Um, the idea that you can just go like, well, here you go, guys. Look, that big tree over there, that kind of looks like your old village tree, doesn't it? And you've got that over there. I think, I mean, I think this is a little bit naive. If you want to acknowledge that the dam, because there are two routes you can take here, I think, that are reasonable. You can either say that cultural damage they will suffer is irrational because culture shouldn't derive from your geographic location, in which case, fuck them, which would be consistent, I guess, if maybe a little heartless. Or you could say, I simply don't care about the damage done to the culture because utilitarian benefit, blah, blah, blah. But, but deferring to this whole, they'll find another tree thing, I think, kind of demonstrates a paternalistic disregard for the structure of their culture that might be hampering your Every, ability to understand. Every, I was dealing at death, society not deals you, with the cities, yeah. annex other cities. We dealt, we dealt with it in Nebraska when Omaha had to annex a city so that they continue to expand outwards to the this, economic benefit of everybody. Like, these I, are, I guess I can, the, I, I guess mm, not the thing. Like, the city doesn't have as much a culture as like a con, right? Yeah, I'm not a I'm the not a cuck, dude. But you know Western that's true. Western Come on, dude. You're literally telling me that like, well, fuck the 40 million Canadians. Like these people have these as their no, 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 no. I'm just no, 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 no. Wait, please, please, Rem, please, please, Rem, 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 please, please, Rem, please. Wait, 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 please, guys, please, please. I got. I bless. I, I'm please. I have a question. Wait, can I answer? How much economic damage would have to be suffered before they would have to find a new tree? Can you tell me? I'm not telling you that there's a threshold. I'm asking you to acknowledge that there is unique cultural damage being done and then to there say is. in spite of that. Okay, okay. But when you say stuff like they'll find another tree or the city of Omaha was incorporated, I think you're downplaying it. And that makes me wonder if you understand because the extent cultures, to which this could. I do. You guys are making these fucking weird ass white nationalist arguments. I'm no, really no, 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 please, please. Right I've, done, I've done this whole I'm arc myself. Please like, don't make dude, me go through cultures it. Cultures change. Rosh, I know you know this, Vosh. Cultures change and adapt to new stuff all of the but there's a yeah, difference there's areas, a difference they between different people they move through different mediums all the time but the critical these people move will there be some damage caused to the culture sure and there are going to be stories revolving around certain lands that they maybe won't be able to tell anymore or that will be lost sure that's possible but i bet they'll get new stories i bet they'll develop a new culture i bet they'll integrate past stuff into new stuff that's just how that is entirely works. that is entirely possible but the difference here is we're talking about mitigative periods of damage when cultures change naturally through the ebb and flow of people and time there's no damage point there i that's wake 
he's got four. I, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Let me clarify, because I, I don't want to misspeak, okay? Culture has changed massively over the past 20 years in the United States of America, but this is done through a fairly natural process of people- There's no such thing as natural culture change. Well, okay, wait, wait, like, do you, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I need you to commit to that statement then. Do you believe that with no, regards, with regards yeah. to culture, there is no fundamental difference between the natural ebb and flow of culture over time and a culture being destroyed by the actions of a state deliberately in favor of economic benefits? Do you think there's a fundamental difference between the culture of the African tribes and the West Bank changing and the culture well, being wait, 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 destroyed? Like 17 questions. Let's focus on one question. It was one question time. phrased in two different ways. So the, fir the first part of the question is, is there a difference between culture being changed by a state versus naturally? Is that what you're asking or? Um, do you, because, do you just, think before, there are different? Before you ask a question, here's the counter I'm going to give you, right? Okay. Is white nationalists include, like, will say things like immigrants are foreign invaders that are ruthlessly changing our culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's an argument that I've heard. Is that like a, I mean, that, that does kind of happen, right? When enough of a certain type of people move in there, does the culture change? Well, yeah, to some extent. Now, would I consider that natural or unnatural? Well, I don't know. Talking about natural changes of culture is really weird. When Mount St. Helen exploded, that added a lot of culture to a lot of, or, or Mount Vesuvius or other like giant volcanic eruptions, that changed the culture. That was natural, right? But that was also violent and that was like very extreme like i don't know when you ask me about a natural culture change versus an unnatural one i mean like that's would you mind if i didn't use the word natural and used a more specific I'm term sure. that indigenous people yeah have, it's, it's, it's not a fair comparison but even 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 if we're not talking about like different modes of oppression here then how about we say that different ways in which a culture can be changed can be destructive in very different ways so american sure, culture has changed yeah. massively over the past 20 years i'm a little fucking okay. baby i've barely registered it i'm just been playing video games but mm -hmm. the culture of the black people who were brought over from africa during the trans slave trade probably mm -hmm. well th i mean that was a culture change and fuck it they did get another culture african-american mm -hmm. culture today i mean we the synthesize through a bunch of different like syncretic forces ha is a pretty powerful force i mean fucking is the most powerful yeah. driving force across several media. yeah they did yeah they, they did some yeah they're the good yeah the world in terms of jazz hip-hop yeah it all came from no African that's sick no and i and i agree and if we displace the wet'suwet'en people and 200 years mm -hmm. later they invent mega oh, future oh, jazz that's, that's great wait, but no, can no, we no, recognize that didn't real quick real quick just to be clear that doesn't justify bringing African American. I know you didn't mean. Right I, know, I, I know you didn't yeah. mean that. I just okay. need to say that because I know Rem was like real quick to make that trade. Uh, I know he was waiting to tweet. Okay, it. I know. I know you. I know you didn't mean that, but do you under do you understand how it can be a little bit callous and maybe even a little ignorant to say, well, the damage done to their culture is irrelevant because in some indeterminate number of centuries they'll find a way to pick back up. Yeah, it's callous because you're making me defend the one side of this while no one here will address the other side, which are the I tens will. of thousands Wait, of will. more I, potential I, Canadians who are being damaged by having to sell their oil for cheap. But that's, that's, that's they my, don't have access to markets in the West. That's my, all of the people that are unemployed right now after COVID-19 who aren't going to get any jobs for their fossil fuels because we can't build the pipeline through. Like, well, how do you defend that's all my, of that? That's my, that's my Genjutsu. That's my, that's my Kekai Genjin. I agree with you. The implementation of the pipeline in a utilitarian sense probably does do more good than um, than uh, whatever harm it does to the Wet'suwet'en people. But my I, goal for that, in, in having a conversation on it, wouldn't be to downplay the extent to which it would do damage to their culture, but rather to ex like acknowledge the fact that A, this is a horrible like situation, and B, what systemically can we do to mitigate damage done to the possible, to the greatest possible extent? Oh, I just want you like, to say, oh, I just want you I mean, to say, like, we will wait, do wait, horrible so damage to them. Points, yes, for woke points i can acknowledge that but everyone in here earlier just said there is no material compensation for the loss of that land so it doesn't seem like there's anything we can do to prevent any systemic harm anyway well That's we can just a pill well, you gotta swallow well we can talk about that how much how much do you think how much would you believe it would be worthwhile for the canadian government to sacrifice in order to appease the people they're harming with this that should be very fucking easy for the Canadian government to calculate because I'm sure there is some vested economic interest in having this pipeline up so they could give maybe a percentage of the profits that are gone by running that pipeline to the people or maybe they could pay them fair value for the land that they're going to be infringing on or maybe they can give them, you know, like some flat sum based on, on, on I don't know, any number of things. I'm sure there are, is a huge economic drive in Canada to get this pipeline built so there should be the money back behind it to, to compensate the people whose land you're essentially invading and taking um, for the said pipeline space. That should be there. Okay, but I, my my, my main issue here, and I agree that that's a take that can be defended, is that it felt like the presuppositions you were making in order to arrive at that conclusions were what we're doing isn't so bad, they'll get over it. It's protecting culture is dumb anyway. If we can acknowledge that great harm is being done, I think we can have a more reasonable conversation about how to mitigate it. Um, sorry, I guess great harm is being done then, sure. Do you think I'm being unfair? 
No, I think you're being fair. It's just something I don't care about. But I think you're being fair. I understand. I, I, I think we probably agree mostly on this, Vasha. Just more trying to be, trying to be more like rhetorically free. safe. Like I understand that. Like and like I would acknowledge that. that yeah, of course, there's going to be some harm, and there's going to be some irreplaceable part of that culture that'll change. But okay. I also, I think that people like Rem take it way too far with this cringy fucking you're white person not take not of like, oh, their whole culture is going to be destroyed with the pipeline. Like I'm pretty sure these people have suffered so much more in the past. These people have suffered so much more over the past 400 years with a single pipeline going through 20,000 square kilometers of land isn't going to wipe them off the face of the earth. I can defend like, Rem too. Yeah. Like, Bosh, like, you, look at the way that he's acting. I, I'm trying to ask you legitimate questions. You refuse to answer them in any serious way. So Wait, no, right. wait, I, wait I don't or he doesn't? You don't, no, Bosh. Oh, shit. No, okay, just clarifying. Um, I mean, okay, wait, 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 you two, wait, you two are both obviously triggered as fuck by each other by the earlier conversation, okay? I think I'm that's fairly good. Okay, well, no, 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 I've been watching you long enough. Okay, buddy. Um, so that's fine, okay? I get it. It's a difficult conversation, all right? I'm just trying to fucking play Terraria. But if we're going to have this conversation, it's important to me that we're all coming to it from the same basic presuppositions. Acknowledging that great cultural harm is being done is very important as a presuppositional step for me, much in the yeah, same sure. way that I can't have a conversation about reparations with people who are making arguments like, well, they should have been over slavery by now. Even though that isn't necessarily intrinsically a component of their end argument, it makes me think there might be biases leading into it. So if we've acknowledged that is the case, if we've acknowledged that great cultural harm is being done, um, mm -hmm. do you have any like reasonable solutions for, for what could be done? Like rolling them Not into really. the you have dominant to culture? You have to materially compensate them. That's the only thing I can think of. Like you can't Let's like- see, can I ask you Sure, what's up? Okay, so I want th this is one thing that really bugged me about because one of my biggest issues that I've had with you, regardless, because ultimately, if you had just said at, at the end of the day that the utilitarian outcomes, for example, of uh, of instilling the pipeline and the benefit that that brings to the average, you know, Canadian, that will, in a sense, uh, outweigh the benefits that it would cause to the indigenous people to not have a, a pipeline shoved through their land. If that was ultimately your only statement, we would not have the type of spat that we currently have. My biggest issue is the way that you've come at this topic and completely dismissed the culture and the legitimate culture and worldview that indigenous people have, as well as ignore the actual Canadian history by which something like the Band Council was instituted on the indigenous people. And that's what I think is quite bigoted because you ignore the these very real issues that are actually afflicting the Wet'suwet'en people and your entire rhetoric when we had our discussion yesterday and the rhetoric that you have made during this conversation is my biggest issue with you and I don't understand why you won't actually discuss that topic with me. I don't disagree with anything that Remus said, by the way, just if I'm throwing my weight in one direction. This feels to me a little bit like the, it feels to me a little bit like the moving conversation or like the just move thing, where I'm sure that if you and I like sat down and had an argument about the effect that like moving can have on like systemic poverty and how it can be difficult for an individual to move, we would agree. But in the context of the conversation that we were having, it felt like you were massively downplaying that to make a point. And I understand yeah, and that can you, be part I'm not well, trying to dogpile that, like, or anything. Well, first of all, I attacked your character because you literally pulled a Mr. Medicare snipe on like a tweet clip 30 oh, seconds after we got Like, I don't know if you like fucking came immediately after so that you could post that, that clip on daughter? Twitter. So yeah, fuck you. Okay. What's that no, the problem, the reason why I wouldn't use like some sort of like utilitarian calculus here is because like the tweet, the, va the value of that tweet, you agree with that tweet. Um, Do you I, not? Cool story, bro. Okay, so the problem wait, is that like, wait, just so I, wait, like, just so I know what exactly is being referred to here. I just, I'm just curious. I don't know. I, I tweeted out a, basically an exact statement of what his position is. Is that at the end of the day, for the sake of of the of benefiting the average American Canadian, we are free to displace these indigenous people from their land, thereby, as you acknowledged in our discussion yesterday, essentially committing cultural genocide against their culture. That is what you admitted to when you said, ultimately, if that's the cause of it, then I don't care. That is what you said. And you've even restated that today on this stream. And you're treating it like it's this massive character attack in, in which like, even though that's literally what you advocated for, and instead you go on stream and say that I'm only doing philosophy to make it feel good, that I don't really care about indigenous people, I just want to be white. Don't forget that one. Vicious character attacks that are completely unwarranted. When I literally just we love white people here, so it's okay. You said on stream yesterday and what you said on stream today. That's why I'm pissed off, and you're treating it like this was this massive takedown of you when I literally stated what you said. Unless so you disagree. The way that Rem's I tweet. So I'll explain what Rem's tweet was. I'll explain what the implications are. Rem is going to say, oh, I didn't know that was the implications. And then we'll be back at ground zero, I guess. So Rem tweeted, 
Destiny saying that the Canadian government should invade all native communities if the natural resources are wanted, remove them from their lands, and thereby assimilate them into Canadian culture. So the implication of what you're saying there is that Canada literally marches its fucking military into native lands, kills them or kicks them the fuck out, Shit. and then forces them to wear, like, fucking whatever no. clothes that normal I Canadian people... I think the clips, Destiny. I attached to that... So now here's where he denies the implication, and then would, we both have to... Would it be, can, I, can I say that while well, I do think... Well, I do think that... Want to commit genocide against all those people and literally kill them all? I don't. I, I don't think. I don't think Which Rem's characterization of your argument was any more hyperbolic than yours at some points, though. Yeah. You can make. You can maybe. Never you can maybe. Said that the Canadian government should invade the fucking lands like, with guns. I, okay, and I apologize. Them them wait, wait. Like wait I apologize if I'm misremembering because I do legitimately have a very bad memory. But I think you actually in this conversation said that what the Canadian government would do is essentially invade the land. I think so I remember what I'm that. Saying, first, no, what I'm saying is that, like, if push came to sub, would there to shove with like some global catastrophe? That at the end of the day, that's probably what would happen. Yeah, like if there was like a global oil shortage or some shit, and like the, everything was fucked and people couldn't drive their cars, that yeah, they probably would start to invade like sovereign land. I'm not saying that that should be like a first resort. Like, let's just start invading all of the like native territories. That's the only way that they can get that you would support invading their land, displacing them, and by result, eradicating their culture, which is what my tweet stated. And then you come back at me with this vicious character attack, uh, accusing me of being a white savior, not actually caring about indigenous people. Like, what the fuck? You, I understand you think that's really funny. Wait, 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 wait hold on, wait, wait, please. Canadian so much? Can you tell me why you don't care about native Canadians? Can I, like, would Canadian it be possible people? for me to jump in here really quickly? My wait, issue. I just want to know why. I want to know why Rem fucking hates Canadians and oil workers so much. Can I also am very curious, but I will have to get to that in just a second because I'm very curious about something myself. Destiny, what? you're saying that you didn't say that you would advocate for the Canadian government invading the West. Mm -hmm and people only if there was some mm -hmm. sort of global catastrophe or something along that lines can i ask you if the canadian yeah. government decided to implement the pipeline and the wet sweat and people said no we're defending our land would you then advocate the canadian government has the moral authority the right to go on ahead and essentially invade the land to implement the pipeline yeah i think if you run it down all the way i think yeah okay but I mean, then, like, then my follow up then my like follow up every, to that my... that's that's but that's this is true of literally like every form of law right so for instance like should a police officer be able to kill you for a speeding ticket no I but mean, if, like... then if you try and attack him yeah but my problem then is yeah. um there you've had conversations in the past before where people say i'm not violent i just want to demographically displace non-white people from the country to which you say well how is that non-violent what happens if they resist and then say well we kill them and then you say well that sounds pretty violent the violence sure. the is implicit yeah, in the sure, state Difference, sure, but the difference here is that, like, the difference here is that it seems like the majority of these people, or I guess there's some, a lot of people, whatever that means to Rem, that are against this, it seems like there is a reasonable deal that can be reached here. I don't think it's reasonable to offer to pay all African Americans to leave the United States. But we're, like, aren't we presupposing the value of their democratic input, though? Because we're, we're making the argument that it doesn't matter what they want. And gosh, this is exactly the point I was trying to make to you, Destiny, is because there needs to be a real conversation about the status of the band councils in the Wet'suwet'en Nation. Yeah, I and agree. I'm they should be rolled into Canadian's federal system. I'm just, oh I'm just God. saying that <laughs> since, since we're, we're since we're discussion about the legitimacy of that democratically elected band I'm, council. I'm just saying since, since we're presupposing, it. since we're presupposing the irrelevant. Wait, for the band wait, wait, one. Wait, if we're pre, Rem is trying to defend monarchs to you right now in patriarchy. Oh, oh, oh listen, I'll wait. I, I'll do that. Actual serious discussion. I'll take a crack at that. I'll take a crack at that next. I just want to say, if we, if we're not, if we're presuming the unimportance, the 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 not illegitimacy, the the irrelevance uh -huh. of the democratic will of the Wet'suwet'en people, which we fundamentally have here in this consequentialist argument, blah blah. We need to do what's better for the people. Um, mm -hmm. If we're doing that, then we're implicitly suggesting that their will isn't really relevant, which means that the state action imposed on them is one which will always carry with it the de facto threat of violence. I.e., your sure, yeah. the the characterization of your argument as Canada invading the Wet'suwet'en people while hyperbolic is honestly, I don't think, dishonest. Um, I think it's dishonest because I don't think reasonably it would ever come to that. Much the same way that if I were to tweet out, I think you should be able to murder. Has happened in the past oh my 20 God. years, Destiny. No, Rem, the Canadian government Rem I just want to let you know two things, Rem. Rem, one, Rem. Reservations. I just want Look you, okay, I have, price. I understand. Look I have two responses price. to you, Rem. One, I don't care, two, plus it's two, all right. reasonable okay? That ever so that. if I were to tweet <laughs> out, if I, I were to tweet out, okay? Where did you get on that, Destiny? If I were to tweet out that, like, I think, don't, I am half Cuban. Plus you're oh, white, okay? Sure. I don't think that police officers, okay, or I, if I say something like, oh, I think that like speeding should be illegal, and somebody were to retweet that and be like, oh, Destiny's position is that you should be able to be murdered for driving your car five miles per hour over the speed limit, 
technically they're right, right? If a police officer pulls you over, you resist arrest. You don't get into the car. They try to like, they write you a ticket. You say no. They're like, okay, well, I have to detain you. They say no. They start fighting you. And it, I mean, like, invariably, that would at some point escalate to violence, right? Would you retract I mean, like, your arguments with the ethnostaters then? This is literally then? a position where the Wait, when I try, I'm sorry. people are not willing to give up that land. What? So, of course, what is going to be the end result? I just, would okay. you, would Wait, you, what did you say, would you, would you retract your arguments with the ethnostaters then, where you say that it's fundamentally violent to try and deport people from their homes because there's a very a high likelihood of them resisting. I imagine well, if no. the U.S. government sent soldiers to my town and just started rounding up black folk, a lot of them would just go along with it because they don't have rifles and tanks. Um, would you then argue that's not fundamentally a violent action because you would imagine there are routes for that to take place that don't involve, like, killing them? No, I would argue that it's different because one, they would probably never make a good faith effort to even do the compensation route in the first place. I seriously doubt that everybody would be okay. Like, oh, we'll give every black person like $250,000 to move to another country. Um, and then two, because um, I don't think that that's like a reasonable route that anybody's looking at right now in terms of like, oh, like I think that most black people would leave the US given a certain amount of money. Whereas it does look like there is a deal that can be reached with native peoples in regards to building a pipeline through their land. That what if that like turned out not to be thing. the case that the ability to live in your homeland as a black person here here in America is as a bit as valuable to them as the ability for mm -hmm. them to live in their homeland is what's the people. Then I think at some point, I think as a Canadian, I think you have to ask yourself like what you value more. And if maybe like, so, because let's say that it does come to the point to where like, oh, well, they're standing there. We're going to have to fucking kill these people to build a pipeline. You have to think, well, am I okay rolling tanks through and just murdering, you know, 2000 people in this tribe? Or maybe should we consider building the pipeline, you know, across a different area? I, I think maybe that would be the question you'd have to ask. Yourself. I think most people would probably say like, well, maybe we try to find a way to reposition the pipeline. What would your answer um, be? What would my answer be? In yeah, if, they, I, if I mean, there was no be... way to implement it without like state violence being enacted against those people, which is almost certainly uh, what we would have to make. You don't know that, Ren, because you don't know anything about these people because you're totally unread here. Oh plus, you're white. No, but, why, hold on. why are you why, doing why, that? Why are you get away with this. I know you're just doing it to trigger me, but you're making blatant lies on the stream. And then when I actually try to explain a single thing about the Wet'suwet'en people, you completely ignore me. I think he's doing I it because it, it works. It's funny. I get DGG thinks it's funny. But you're talking just, about an actual I just want to make sure that nobody forgets here what's going on, okay? I just want to get all the facts on the table, okay? No, so anyway, are the Polish um, white? So like, I, I Rem, are allowing him to do this on wait, 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 your stream. Wait, 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 the re I'm, the, I'm the host and the moderator this time, okay? Well, you're not and, moderating. And he's white. I'm, well, I'm, and I'm white. Listen, the, I'm trying to engage the way I can because I feel like you two have some serious mutual biases that you're engaging in right now. And I think that I, I, don't, I don't know how well, like, the discourse is going to be arrived at from conversations between you, you two at this point. You can really just listen to the way that he's engaging. Oh, yeah. Oh, people. oh, wait. No, yeah. He's treating you in super bad faith. Yeah. And you're trying to treat him in good faith, but he's only you treating you that way because he... Bad... Do you think I'm treating him in bad faith right now, Fosh? No, I think you're making a good faith effort, but I think that he <laughs> is under the impression that your initial efforts in engaging with him were bad faith or at least misinformed enough that he doesn't have a reasonable expectation of engaging with you in good faith. And at that but point, there's no the way to have a... I, I mean, I, I can't I can't speak for just him or anything. That's just the impression. That's all you seem to care about. That's why I'm streaming this on my channel and it's gonna be uploaded later. You got it. Um, okay, so why did you join our anyway, conversation? Wait, me? You wait, with me? wait, are oh, you streaming? I don't want you, you running banned? around telling people that I'm like some imperialist colonizer well, to invade and murder and culturally genocide people. Part of the tweet I sent out. Okay, you listen. With it. Okay, there are two main reasons why I came in here. One, I don't want you going around telling people that I'm a literal in fa like in favor of invading and destroying fucking lands of people. And two, <laughs> you're white. I, I, never, okay? on, I never said that. I, I literally laid out. Is this a new? Is this? Did I not lay out very clearly what his position was? And has, has what he said differed at all from the way I characterized it? I think that your characterization of his argument as the Canadian government is 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 due in invading or I guess like displacing these people, I would consider that a fair characterization. Though I think Thank that you. there are different levels of charitability you could assign to that interpretation. Like for example, there's a big difference between somebody saying like, well, I think that in a utilitarian sense, we derive more benefit from the use of that pipeline. So if it came to it, I'd be willing to enact state action with some kind of due compensation for the people. And what other people would interpret, which would be destiny literally really just wants to mow in with tanks and kill them and implement the pipeline. But I attached the clips to, so people could actually hear. He included the clips. Did you even look at the clips? Destiny, why doesn't your friend follow me on Twitter? I'm just saying, in the clips, I literally say, I think Canada should go in and murder every person that, like, doesn't pass the white person. No, why are you like characterizing that? <laughs> I, I didn't characterize you at all like that, so I don't know why you're peddling in these fucking lies. 
I, I don't understand. I literally he's using need... he's using sneaky debate tactics. Right? I know he's no he's just doing quips. I understand. It's funny. Ha ha. Like I, I I get it. But I want to have an actual conversation about the issue. This is something I genuinely care about. Okay. Wait wait wait. But we've a, we've actually made wait, pretty so decent. Me, wait, Vosh, right. you asked me an earlier question that I thought was really interesting. Okay. So uh -huh. you asked me, um, what if the people like wouldn't back down? What like pragmatically, what should Canada do? Um, so like this is an interesting hypothetical to engagement. I'm gonna avoid it. So the question would be like how plausible is it to build a pipeline around? So for instance, let's say that there are two possible alternatives. Let's say that one, it's actually not that difficult. It would just cost like maybe another $250 million, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's say that on the other hand, um, let's say that you have to go through like two tribes ancestral lands at that point. And now you've got like double the contention, right? Um, do you acknowledge that like at some point, you are going to have to kind of like brute force it or do you just say like well sorry for the rest of you canadian people like these people in in these lands have like authoritarian control within the borders of canada i know none of you guys have that none of you other provinces have the rights that these people do they li their rights literally supersede your own and you're all just going to have to suffer as a result of it well just keep keep in mind the only reason why mm -hmm. you're why you're framing their relationship to canada in that way is because mm -hmm. they accept welfare from the government uh, because if, if they didn't if it weren't for the original history of colonization, the Wet'suwet'en people mm -hmm. would probably be in a, a sovereign, truly sovereign territory. So it seems a well, little bit. It's it w well, okay, or something approximating it. What's well, difficult I mean, to can... me is 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 putting our like putting them in a position where it's like, okay, well, unfortunately, you're ultimately you're ultimately you know subject to the will of the Canadian people because you're in a position where you take advantage of our like wealth and resources anyway. Why are they in that position? Oh, well, because we like killed your people like 300 years ago, you know? Sure. The, the problem is that like, even if they, just to be clear, even if they weren't taking federal money, if they were or they were their own sovereign state, um, we would start enacting other forms of violence on them to probably get them to buckle to the pipeline. Yeah. So for instance, um, we would probably start sanctioning them or we would say like, okay, well, you're gonna have tariffs or you're not allowed to trade with our country if you're going to oppose this thing. Um, rather than if you go along with this, then we would offer you some economic benefit. We'd either pay you direct cash transfer or we would have like some preferential trade treatment or whatever. Do you think right? it's morally permissible that more powerful nations should always have the ability to begin to damage the nations around them if they feel they can get something from it um i i just i know i understand pragmatically hold on hold on because hold on, you phrase that in a way where it's like oh well obviously we should always but what you're what you're considering is you're looking at two actors here you're only looking at two what a big country and a small country but you're not taking into account the people in that country because the way that you ask me that is really morally loaded do you think a big country should have a right to shit all over a small country but i could just as easily flip that and go do you think that a very small country with very few people should be able to destroy the material well-being of of tens of millions of other people because well, that's how you could very well, easily phrase the, it in but account, that right? well, yeah but that would be an uncharitable uh, phrasing of my argument because you can't reasonably say the Wet'suwet'en people would be destroying anything if they already have a legal and moral right to the territory that controls no, the No, you just because you have a legal and moral right to them, it doesn't mean you can't be damaging the material harm. Technically, well, um, damaging well, kind of, of implies all, the they're doing a harm as opposed to not doing a good. By not giving them the oil, they wouldn't be doing a harm, they'd be refraining from doing a good. The difference between like an obligatory and a supererogatory action is very important to me. Mm, this this gets into weird like doing versus allowing harm and yeah you know but like, i think that's i think that's valid i would i would draw a hard line here yeah based on the legacy of colonialism and the outcomes that it seems to bring about i would be comfortable with saying that smaller nations should be able to defend their sovereign borders against the impositions of larger nations even if doing so means the larger nation is going to have a population suffer more for it um now I obviously guess, there's just, wiggle room seems there like a weird position for me to demand that a nation have such ultra charitability to a smaller country next to it or within it that it's going to allow that country's existence to cause like material damage to some of its poorest citizens but the problem um, is because, the problem is like, that's, that's only a choice for. that's only a choice the tough nations get to make the weaker nations never get to actually participate in that dialogue they don't get to decide to what extent do i enforce soft political power on my neighbors the issue with this is even if you can make good arguments for it where you're stacking the deck in favor of a system where the powerful nations are the only ones that have any real sovereignty yeah I, yeah I mean that's true but that's kind of just an unfortunate reality of the world right like just because some smaller nations don't have as much bargaining power as larger nations that means that larger nations should never bargain on behalf of their citizens like oh, that well, they can sense. they can bargain but there's a difference between bargaining and em uh, embargoes attempting to hurt the neighboring nation 
it's just it feels like it feels like we're like trying to play a game where we know for a fact which groups are going to win. I don't know if that sits well with me, especially given well, yeah, the fact. Yeah, of course. That, I, I guess yeah. like I just my problem is that like we're valuing the culture, I guess, uh, of some three thousand people over like the material well-being. Well, right of, now, I'm not talking about the culture. I'm only talking about the sovereign rights of the Wet'suwet'en people, which are only subverted in this case due to a history of colonialism. If we if we ignore mm -hmm. that, because I don't pay any respect whatsoever to the legal precedent of like which nations destroyed which ones. Um, I don't know if like the history of colonialism changes like any of the calculations here other than like if you want to argue that the history of colonialism should be taken into account then maybe like a larger cash transfer has to happen or something I guess but like because because if we were to talk about the history of colonialism we were talking about like actually compensating these people for what they've lost the true answer at that point is we should give them back all of their lands which means sailing back on over to Europe true but so I that, would that's I would never gonna happen I right? would argue that the, the the people who live now in Canada have like a right to their land as well I don't know why if they have though? a right to the well because I because I don't like displacing people which is why we're having this argument to begin with right i don't think that the canadian people necessarily have a right to the natural resources of of, of uh non-compliant independent sovereign nations and i don't think that the independent uh sovereign nations have a right to then centuries later displace people who were just born in canada i i think it's really difficult to balance this geopolitically because no matter which way you go you're probably going to contribute harm in some direction that just seems like a weird like moral position to take where it's like i'm gonna do this harm so that my children don't have to so like you move in you invade all the sovereign lands you say i accept this moral evil and then 100 years later your children are like oh we can live on these lands but it's okay because the evil was committed a long time ago thank god they made that yeah, well yeah i'm not gonna hold the ancestors i'm not gonna hold people accountable for the moral wrongs of their ancestors that seems pretty well, fucked we up. kind of should a little bit right like in the form of like reparations i say that but like recompensing like communities that have had their labor stolen or their land stolen or something um it's a i guess like at the end of the day like i acknowledge that it's pretty complicated I, this is why i hate i hate the concept of like um these like reservations because they're, they're never truly going to be sovereign right everyone knows that it's not going to happen um and it seems like it would just make more sense to to roll these people like I into your actual federal system give them a real voice in parliament and then like incorporate them into your system like you would every other citizen would you give make the argument the that there was no place left in the world for people at least in our corner of the world um to exist outside the purview of a liberal democracy that if your culture is fundamentally incompatible with one which is the basis of our legal system that you shouldn't be given any space in which to practice that wait can you that you shouldn't be allowed to practice like another government another form of government or yeah what, like, like fundamentally there's no room in our chunk of the world anymore for people to participate mm -hmm. in like the hereditary tribal structures that the Wet'suwet'en people believe in that like if you believe that shit like sorry you need to be rolled into the broader democratic liberalism of our society um, I think that you probably, you can practice it on a smaller level, like on a religious level. Um, so for instance, like there are some Muslims that like to practice some forms of like Sharia law. So like if you steal something, maybe you get swatted a few times or Catholics say that you have to form some um, amount or do some amount of contrition. Like if you commit like a certain moral crime or whatever, I think that those smaller systems are okay. But in terms of how the larger government system works, you probably all should have to fall in line, I think, in order for it to work. Um, the, the alternative to that is some form of anarchy. Do you think it's possible to do that long term over a form of incentive structures rather than actively tr just rolling them in like with some big legislation? Like if I could think of a way to do this ideally, what I would imagine it would be is like maybe the broader government, or like the government of Canada, could try to... Um, uh, could try to offer like incentives or grants or some kind of tax reduction for people from Wet'suwet'en or other uh, like associated territories um, if they decide to like live long term in those countries. Uh, and that way we'd have like this soft pressure to incorporate, which I think, frankly, a lot of them would prefer to because I don't think that a young person born in Wet'suwet'en territory should be forced into their culture any more than I think somebody born in America should be forced into ours. And then if they're eventually like incentivized into rolling over here, then um, over the period of maybe like 60 or 70 years, the Wet'suwet'en culture is no longer substantial enough to hold claim to that territory sorry that was a bit wordy but like do you think that yeah, would be so like basically you're asking me would it be better to like slowly roll them in rather than to do it violently and in like two days right yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, even I, if it meant yeah, a sacrifice I, I yeah like it would it yeah, would course, we wouldn't be sure. able to get as much immediately sure there probably are more responsible ways to do it that could also maybe set a positive precedent in the future for other but the, but i mean other people might just see that as like they're going to resist the entire way and maybe it act, like well fuck i don't know i would actually have to think about that a lot more i would have to because do this is, hand, i don't have answers to this i'm just yeah. curious because like on one hand it sounds good that you do it more gently but on another hand like you know how in the u.s when we're like 
maybe we should have background checks for private sales. Now, as much as it hurts to say this, a lot of conservatives that oppose background checks, they don't actually oppose background checks. What they're scared of is that, well, if we let you do background checks now, tomorrow you're going to want to take our guns. That they see it as like a slippery slope. Yeah. So I, I worry Me that too. like... Yeah, any type of like deal that you start to make, people are like, well, no, fuck you. We're not going to do any of this soft shit because we know what your ultimate goal is, and that's assimilation. And we don't want to do that. That would that would be like my guess. Is that or that could happen, right? As a that result. would I know for a fact that would happen because there are people who are in my chat who believe that offering an incentive for um for people born in the wet sweat and territories to join like the Canadian society broadly, um, that they would consider that cultural genocide. This is where I guess I depart from a lot of the woker people because I believe the the belief that a person because of their blood should be locked into the wet sweat and culture is every bit as toxic as the idea that just because you're born into like a given ethnic group that you shouldn't be able to do other things with your life. If individual wet sweat and people as the, through the course of their life with no pressure from the state want to live comfortably in like the broader purview of democratic liberal society, them. I think that's probably a good thing. It's definitely a simpler thing in the long term, but if they don't want to, if they hold their land, I just don't know if I could morally excuse state action being taken to break apart their culture. Sure, I understand. But I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't have as much of value in culture, and I'm obviously a, I don't know if you'd call me a statist, whatever the opposite of an anarchist is. I love states. A I love state power. <laughs> cringe lord. Yeah, I love it when the state tells individuals that you have to fucking fall in line for the benefit of everybody else. That shit gets my cock rock fucking hard. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, when, when I look at like this much material benefit that could, or well-being that could exist across all of Canada, and there's just a few hundred people stopping it, yeah, I mean, I kind of fall on the side of like, we need to figure out a way to make the pipeline work. All right. Well, I think that at least in this conversation, you've come off a lot more conscientious of the long term uh, or, or material harm that it could potentially do. A slight departure, if I may. Um, you said you hated me on Twitch. Do you still hold to that? Should I be offended or are we Every just time I talk to you motherfuckers, the next minute, as soon as you guys go on Twitter, you're like, in this conversation, Destiny said you wanted to murder everybody. I have you never done that You did it to you. me. You told me that my class clouded my judgment and I hate you for it. But I don't hate you quite as much right now because I don't hold grudges. So I hate you like 30% right now. Plus you're white, okay? So keep that in mind. Yeah, I've been, I, I've watched the last few VODs and I have really haven't, this is must be really new, the plus your white thing. This must be like fresh out of the DGG fucking meme files. I just think it makes some people really mad to be mad. I don't think it makes you mad, but I know it makes Rem mad. Because Rem was tweeting earlier, well, well, actually, I have a great, great, great grandfather's aunt, okay, who had a dog that was owned by an indigenous person. So, so I just like to remind people to bring him down a knob at the end of the day, you know? Listen, I'm a slob, okay? I'm pretty, there are some prominent um, uh, white identitarians who wouldn't consider me a part of their club. So I think, I think oh. I'm still free. Most white identitarians seem to forget that the Slavic people were super fucking hated by Hitler, actually. It's pretty funny, but I'm sure you could, if Fuentes can weasel his way into white nationalism, I'm sure you can find a place there. I can weasel my way out, yeah. yeah. <sighs> okay, all right, I love you, buddy. Be careful, okay? All right. Wait, is Rem even also, still here? Did he just leave? No, I would like to say that Rem said I was here for publicity. Rem is actually the one that left the call and went live. Plus, he's white. Bye. Try to get along with him in the future. He's gone. Well...